Greetings everyone, and welcome to another tutorial. The rolling Arch Linux distribution is always evolving, and so are my installation methods. I'm excited to share them with you right after this. I built the freshest Arch ISO this morning using the latest sources, so I'm going to boot a fresh KVM with it. I'm going to hit enter here to boot this Arch ISO, which is the important first step in getting Arch Linux installed. So these are the standard boot up messages from the kernel and other things. Starting up the uh, services. Here we go, kernel 6.0.12, which is current as of today. All right, um, so if you need wireless connectivity, you know the drill, IWCTL and follow instructions. ArchWiki has a lot of good instructions. But uh, we have DHCP configured correctly for this virtual machine. If I type IPA, you can see I have a local private address assigned. So internet connectivity is working. So since that's working, pacman-syy to synchronize uh, the package databases. And then we'll check for any updates that are available. So pacman syu. Ah, there's already an update. Uh, one package, cloud init. So that's done. So let's take a look here. The font's a little bit small, so let's fix that by typing subfont. Terminus 128n. Okay, that's very nice and large. So we're ready to go with uh, Arch install, which I will use to set up the basic defaults for a Lux encrypted system. And it looks like uh, the font bug is still here. It made the fonts tiny, sorry guys. But we'll just proceed here and select the region, which in my case is United States, where to get the packages from, uh, geographic location, every locale looks good. Drives, the target drive uh, today will be a 64 gig VDA device. And for disk layout, I'm going to choose wipe all selected drives and use best effort default partition layout. ButterFS for the main partition or the root partition. We'll use the BTRFS subvolumes with a default structure, yes. BTRFS compression, yes. And for the Lux encryption, uh, LVM encryption, we'll type in my uh, password for today for this machine. And we'll enter it again for verification. That's good. So for bootloader, I'd like to be able to boot from snapshots using time shift. So I will select yes as use grub as bootloader. Swap is ZRAM swap, and we'll leave that set to true. Host name, instead of Arch Linux, that's kind of boring, I'll call this machine Archie. Host name Archie. Root password, we'll leave unset because we don't want to have root account accessible. We'll add a user instead. Username, of course, will be Steven. And I'll give myself a password. Enter it once and enter it twice for verification as it says should steven be super user sudo yes I'd like to become root using sudo confirm and exit looking pretty good next for the profile i'm going to choose the minimal a very basic installation that allows you to customize arch linux as you see fit and that's perfect because we just want to use Arch install to set up the drive and the encryption, really, basically. So audio will leave us none. Kernels as Linux, I'll set up later. Additional packages, I do want to include some utilities here. Uh, Git, I'll need. Nano for editing. OpenSSH is always good to have if you want to remote into your installed system. Terminus font to fix the tiny font issue. Uh, or rather to have you guys be able to read what I'm typing here. 
Again, bear with me. I'll fix this as soon as I can. For networking, I'll just copy the ISO network configuration to installation. That works for DHCP in my case. Uh, we'll install Network Manager and all the tools later. So for the time zone, I will choose US Pacific since that's where I am. And we'll use automatic time sync. NTP is true. So network time protocol synchronizes the clock. Optional repositories, I'll use the multi-lib 32-bit library repository enabled. So I always like to do that. And we'll just um, hit enter on install. And to encrypt, I'll choose index number one, which is the primary uh, BTRFS root file system to encrypt. So I'll select one here, enter the continue. So it just gives you a summary and that usually is mostly off screen. And we'll just hit enter to uh, begin the install process. And so it just partitions, encrypts the drive sets up the ButterFS or PTRFS subvolumes, downloads and installs the packages, enables uh, various services, and it's done. So um, let's do post-installation uh, configurations to root. So let's check our file system table here, nano etsy file system table or FS tab. And as you can see, it ignored my request for compression and also relay time is not very good for SSDs that I usually have. And space cache equals B2 is uh, redundant here. I'm going to instead uh, type compress equals Z standard for uh, compression on the fly that ButterFS uh, offers. Same thing for all the other subvolumes. So uh, root dot snapshots, do no access time compress equals Z standard. Again, th these options for ButterFS mounts reduce the write cycles on your SSD because it has a limited uh, lifespan of, of number of writes it can tolerate before it wears out. So we'll also do the home subvolume. Also the uh, Pac-Man package subvolume. Same thing here. Space cache equals version two is um, uh, automatically added. And I'll show you this uh, in a bit when I check uh, the mount options in, a, in our booted system. So we also got the log subvolume fix. So all the ButterFS subvolumes. I generally uh, change the options this way. I find that's very good for performance and least amount of wear on my solid state drives. This has no effect on your rotating platters, obviously. Maybe increases the performance there as well. I don't know, I haven't tested it since I don't have rotating platters anymore. Okay, next let's check the encryption here. Let's do nano Etsy default grub. Oh yeah, so Crypt device is set up already for us. Thank you, Arch install. And because this is a VM with a certain um, resolution, I like to type video equals 1920 by 1080. If you're on physical hardware, you, chances are you won't need to do this. As you can see, crypt device and the unique um, identifier is correct for the root subvolume. So root FS type is ButterFS. Everything looks good here on that file. So we modified the grub configuration. So we type grub make config dash o uh, boot grub grub.cfg. Exactly what the arch wiki tells us to do. And let me check one more file here. Nano etsy mkinit copyio.conf. Let's see what arch installed it here. Never trust anything Arch install does unless you check yourself and you're happy with it. So modules, ButterFS is good. And it also loads the encrypt hook before it loads the file systems hook. So Lux encryption is configured correctly, it seems so far. Looks promising. So uh, we're done with post install config for now. So let's exit and reboot. Let's cross fingers. 
hopefully this works. But just as you can see, Arch install has some bugs left. Uh, it's just normal. That's easily fixed, right? So Arch Linux. OK, enter passphrase. I'm going to enter the uh, decryption for the uh, crypt LVM volume. Let it decrypt the volume so it can boot. Take a couple of seconds here. And there we go. I'm going to log in as Steven. Give it my password. All right, tiny fonts here. So set font, ter, 128n, because we installed the terminus font earlier and arch install additional packages. That's much more legibly, I hope, for you guys. Sorry about the tiny fonts earlier, just can't be helped. So I'm checking the mount uh, options here. As you can see, no access time, compress equals Z standard level three, and space cache equals version two has been enabled automatically. If this had been an SSD, a real SSD, SSD would have been an option as well. So let's make dear git because I want to pull uh, my package lists from the public uh, GitHub re repo. So I'll do, I'll leave the link in the description below. So git clone https colon github.com slash Stevens tech talks slash Arch Linux. And there we go. I don't have many files in there uh, yet in this uh, GitHub repo. Uh, that may happen in the future, depending on what my plans are. Okay, so in pack lists, uh, and then today's date, I've got a bunch of packages, all date stamped. So let's um, install them. But before we do that, let me become root and uh, configure Pacman first. So sudo s, so sudo works. And what I want to do is uh, make sure we're synced up with the repository. So pacman syy. Make sure another update hasn't snuck in there. No, it hasn't. With syu, that is. So um, let's nano etsy pacman.conf. And what I want to do is go down here to miscellaneous options and enable color, because I like color. And for parallel downloads, because we're downloading a bunch of packages, we want to make this as quick as possible. So we want to saturate the network connection today. Your experience may vary tremendously depending on where you are in the world. So parallel downloads equals 10 is what I'll use to keep this video short. So now we're ready. Uh, to install these package lists. So pacman s dash dash needed hyphen less than or greater than uh, arch Linux redirect that is arch ISO underscore pack list 22 dot uh, 22.12.16.txt. And we'll just hit enter. And that lists a bunch of packages we need to download. So you can see parallel downloads equals 10 speeds things up tremendously. And it's done. All that typing has been saved. You just have to type it once and put it in these files. So next, I'd like to install the drivers list. Again, you can modify these depending on your needs and your hardware. Everybody needs different drivers. So these are my drivers that I use for this VM. So next, I will install uh, the networking uh, packages or network-related packages. So I only install what I need. Yes, I want IP tables, uh, the new version, NFT. Install IP tables, the old version, which comes from the Arch ISO. There we go. And next, what I want to do, there's a certain order to these that I would suggest. So next, I'd like to install the fonts, a whole bunch of fonts. So I like to have my interface, my desktop KDE interface looking pretty. More fonts, the merrier. Again, these are Latin-based fonts, place uh, with Cyrillic or other fonts as needed. So once that's done, I'm going to 
install the uh, printing related packages. Look at all that typing I saved. That's a lot of packages that would need to be typed using the traditional Arch way. A lot of typing and a lot of fiddling with the installed system afterwards. I'm kind of lazy in my older age. Um, don't want to type too much. I want to type it once and be done. Okay, so uh, next what I'd like to do is uh, take care of the multimedia package list. That's kind of short. It pulls in a bunch of packages. Yeah, parallel downloads equals 10 really works for me in my particular environment. Your mileage may vary, as we say in the United States. Okay, um, next step is let's install the basic X Windows system server. And that's done with all its uh, associated utilities. Went quick. Now we can install all the KDE Plasma packages, the latest packages available from Arch repos. We'll do the uh, Phonon Qt5 GStreamer as the default, because we're using GStreamer in this install. Hit yes. So a bunch of more packages for a complete KDE Plasma environment have been downloaded and installed. Next, and uh, finally, I'll have some miscellaneous apps that don't fit in any other, other lists uh, to download. That includes um, FileZilla, Firefox, etc., etc. And also LibreOffice Fresh I like to have in my installed system to be productive, right? Good. So that's taken care of. That saved me a whole bunch of typing. Let's enable... Uh, system services and timers here. So first we'll type system CTL enable Avahi daemon. That's for um, uh, network discovery, for example. Next we'll enable um, Bluetooth. This VM doesn't have a Bluetooth uh, adapter, but I install it anyway because all my physical hardware has Bluetooth. Uh, I'd like to disable here, the DHCP client daemon, or DHCPCD.service, because we'll be using Network Manager going forward. So the Arch ISO has the DHCP enabled, so we don't want that now with the installed uh, system. So we disable that. Next, we'll enable uh, for randomness, random number generation, etc., etc., the HaveGED or HaveGED service. I don't know how to pronounce that. It's a good thing to have on the system, especially for encryption purposes, etc. Cup service for printing, I like to enable. Next, I like to enable the firewall daemon, or firewall D, because I want that running as soon as possible for security purposes. Even though this is a secure private network, you never know if you have to connect to the public internet at a cafe, for example. SDDM for the KDE Plasma Display Manager. And we'll also enable Network Manager, the aforementioned Network Manager. And we'll also want to enable SSHD for secure shelling into the system. Comes in handy and also MicroPower for controlling USB and other uh, power system. So anyway, um, power saving. <laughs> okay, so ID Steven shows I'm not a member of very many groups. Uh, Arch install didn't add me to very many groups because I did a minimal install. So let me fix that by adding myself to additional groups for the best uh, experience, right? So user mod dash A capital G. I like to add my account to sys ADM network scanner Power Unix to Unix copy or UCP audio legacy like line printing or LP RF kill to control my radio cards like Wi Fi and Bluetooth video storage optical, although I don't have any optical drives anymore, but it's good to have users. And we'll do a new line here. 
looks good. And uh, yeah, the account is Steven that we'd like to apply this modification to. So now if I type ID Steven, you'll see I've been added magically to all these additional groups. That's good. So let's reboot. And here comes the important thing. The smoke test, as it were. Hoping after I enter the password for decryption here, uh, I hope to be greeted with the uh, SDDM, or Simple Display Manager, I think it's called. And then we should have access to KDE Plasma Desktop. So let's see what happens. And there it is. So we have Plasma Wayland session available. So I installed the Wayland packages and also X11. Let's stay with Wayland. Wayland's working really well with KDE lately. So Wayland it is, finally. <laughs> okay. So there we go. Not quite so psychedelic default wallpaper. Thank you, KDE team. So let's switch for my eyes of my accessibility needs to Breeze Dark. And like to uh, select clicking files or folders, selects them, and then double click to open. So I'll click apply, like that behavior. And uh, on display, I will fix the screen resolution, 1920 by 1080. And I'll select the scale to 150. Make the screen more legible for you YouTube viewers out there. Apply, applies instantly since this is uh, Wayland. However, what I'm gonna do is log out and log back in again because I found some of the fonts can look a little funky if I don't do this. So let me just log out quickly, log back in again to reload the uh, Wayland Plasma session. And we should have nice crispish, crispy fonts. Look how pretty they are. So here we have the firewall already enabled. It's assumed public. I'll it's fine. Yeah, that works. Yeah, it looks like everything works here. Sound, everything. So yeah, um, my list includes a lot of different connection types, including uh, all kinds of VPNs that might be handy and bridge and all that stuff that's available to you. I pretty much threw in everything and the kitchen sink. So let's open a console here. Let me drag this down to the taskbar. Open console. The font's still a little bit small. Let me nudge it up one notch. There we go. Hopefully you can read it. So NeoFetch shows that we have just a little over a thousand packages installed. This is running Plasma 5.26.4. It's not quite 5.27. 3.h shows ZRAM is working great. I don't have too much RAM used. It's still building the database for search, etc. So yeah, um, LSBLK shows the uh, crypt LVM is under VDA2, which is the entire BTRFS file system and all the subvolumes. DF-H shows those thousand packages taking around six gigs of Disk space, not too bad, because we installed a lot of packages. If you're going to do this once, might as well do it right. right? So you have a working system right out of the box. At least that's my view. So let's enable AUR by typing git clone https colon slash slash aur dot arch linux dot org slash paru. I like paru as the AUR helper because it's written in Rust and it works really well for me. I like the way it works. Better than yay, but you might like yay, so uh, you know what to do if you want yay. So cd paru make package si builds the package and installs it. So it asks for the uh, password for elevating privileges. So it downloads Rust. I prefer Rust package over Rust up because um, that's more system close. But usually if I develop Rust, I use Rust up instead for a local install of Rust. All right, let's proceed with the installation and it's done. So let me change to my home directory with CD 
and we type uh, Paru to test it. It looks like it works great, no updates. So let's remove the build directory with rm-fr Paru. Cool, because now we can install packages from the AUR, which is TimeShift, for example, which we want to use today. So Paru TimeShift shows us a bunch of options. I like to select option two here, TimeShift AutoSnap, which should automatically pull in TimeShift. And for every package update, it creates an automatic uh, snapshot using TimeShift. So we'll select yes to everything here and um, Get going with that. So it builds a whole bunch of things and it's installed. The magic of video editing. So it, it suggests we also install grub-btrfs. But before we do that, um, for booting from snapshots, right? So before we do that, let me run time shift and configure it and then uh, create the first snapshot for the freshly installed system. So ButterFS is detected, it's fantastic. No, I don't want to include at home. So again, this is, uh, it's, it shows the Lux uh, encrypted ButterFS root file system correctly. Snapshot levels, everything uh, should be fine as default for me. Again, you may choose something else here scheduled. Uh, no, we won't include at home in backups. I usually do standard backups for my personal files. And we'll just finish here. Let's create our first snapshot, which should be pretty much instant for ButterFS, All right? Very easy on ButterFS. So we'll call this first snapshot, the base image as installed. And there we go. Our first snapshot. Again, before you do anything substantial with the system, uh, please be sure to make a snapshot first. So you can always roll back if something goes wrong. So uh, let's go ahead with the optional dependency. We do paru dash capital S, just like Pac-Man, grub dash butterfs. So again, that adds a grub submenu for booting from snapshots. I'll demonstrate that in a moment. So once that's installed, looks like it installed correctly. So next step is let's sudo grub-mkconfig-o slash boot slash grub slash grub.cfg because we modified our grub configuration with the grub-btrfs. So we we'll have to let the uh, grub configuration no that we've done so so it found already the snapshot which is the on-demand base image as installed snapshot so it looks like everything is successful some warnings we can ignore all right and you can automate this uh using the documentation i'll link to in the description below for uh, keeping the arch uh, the grub menu up to date so uh let's install duf um, and uh, let's type DUF here. Some people like to see this. So here's DUF for this system. So of course, with a snapshot, we're using a little more space, 6.7 gigs for the uh, root file system. Not bad. Cool. So let's uh, close out of the console. Let me demonstrate the booting from snapshot functionality here. Let me restart. Wait for the system to come up again. Ooh, that's a big mouse pointer. All right, look, we've got a new submenu here on the bottom, Arch Linux Snapshots. So let's enter into that. And here's our single base image as installed snapshot. So let's enter into here, the enter key or return. And instead of the fallback, I'm gonna select the standard init RAM FS Intel microcode. If you've got an AMD microcode, you can choose that instead. I've got both microcodes installed in this in this particular device. As you can see, the snapshots are also all encrypted naturally. So let me enter the password here, or the passphrase rather, for dev VDA2. This will boot a read-only snapshot, I believe. Um, as you can see, this warning is 
typical and normal for these snapshots. You can ignore this warning. It just means it's not configured for read-write. That's expected. So let me log in to the snapshot. And uh, stand by. Bing! Detected! Boot it into time shift snapshot. Please restore the snapshot. Wonderful! Isn't that nice? So let's enter the uh, password, my password, to launch time shift. I'm going to select our base image as installed, a snapshot, and restore. So data will be modified in dev, uh, the VDA2 or DM0. Just click next, and restore is completed. It's almost instantaneous with ButterFS. You can continue the working or restart. I would say, see, made another snapshot here, uh, live before restoring. So that's what's running currently, is the new snapshot. So what I like to do is reboot as soon as possible, not do too much for the system. I'm going to restart. And uh, reboot now. Again, that warning you see, uh, you can safely ignore. That's typical every time. I've seen that forever. Okay, so now we should be booting our restored system. So I'm going to hit enter here for the first menu item in Grub. Enter the good old passphrase to unlock the root file system or unencrypt or make it accessible rather. It doesn't unencrypt everything. Well, it feels that way. It takes a while with this virtual machine. Okay, so let me log in here and here's our freshly rolled back system. Looks pretty healthy. Let me open console quickly. Make it a little bigger font here and it's type doof. DUF, command not found because we've rolled back. So it's gone. So the uh, time shift, snapshot, booting system, everything working great. Let me launch Discover here because I also installed Flatpak. So let me test the Flatpak system. Let me search for, oh, I don't know. Chrome, Google Chrome is what I want. Ah, looks like Discover works great. So let me type Google Chrome. Ah, there it is. And Google Chrome, web browser from Google, is available as a flat pack. So um, let me click here on the description. As you can see, it gives you nice ratings where it's distributed from. Mixed reviews, that's okay. Everybody has complaints, right? Permissions for Google Chrome. It has access to everything on your system. Not, not really, but uh, this is for a test, right? I'm doing this for you guys. I'm making a sacrifice and installing Google Chrome. That's a great web browser. I'm just kidding. Okay, so it's installed. You can remove here. Um, let me check here. Yeah, it's, uh, the system is up to date, so that works as well. Can use Discover to update your system. I don't recommend it. I would use Paru to do that, or Yay in your case if you want that. Let me launch uh, Google Chrome to check to make sure the Flatpak system is working. Uh, yes. Yeah, it's running in the background too. Just a little reminder, Chrome does that unless you disable it explicitly. Look at those pretty fonts. I love the font list that the font package to the packages that I've uh, have in the list there. So if you have a Latin alphabet, you will like it too, I hope. So here's the archlinux.org website. Um, it is uh, pretty standard. I still suggest you keep up with the news in case you have to do an intervention. Okay, let me select, choose the uh, package uh, search here. So Linux kernel, uh, we're still on 6.0.12, which is marked out of date. 6.1 hopefully is coming soon. As you can see, using modular package lists broken down by function saves a lot of typing, reduces errors, and makes maintenance much easier as Arch rolls on. Just set this up once and you're done. I hope this video was useful to you and you had as much fun as I have. If so, please consider leaving a like to help with the YouTube algorithm and subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, take care.